Hey guys, I am here with uh, 1437, as it used to be called, now called Rose. How's it going? We're here at the Boston Major, man. You doing alright? I'm doing alright, thank you for asking. Oh, you're welcome. Nobody ever thanks me for asking if they're doing well, so... <laughs> you're welcome, sir. So let's talk about Rose, uh, in the beginning. Now, 1437, people think that, like, you went from numbers to this nice name, because uh, you gained a passion in your life, you gained love. Not true though. 1437 was, I believe, what did it stand for again? I love you forever? Mm-hmm. So you've always been a passionate guy, right? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but why did you change your name? Well, what, what's up with Rose? Uh, it was like after TI6, I just uh, saw his name and it sort of just clicked with me. Oh. I just thought like, I felt some sort of connection and I was like, you know what, uh, maybe it's time for a change, yeah. just to try it out, see how it goes. I feel like it's more human, right? Normally people just call me by my name. Yeah. But now I can hear some people going like, hey Rose, Rose, hello. Good, I like it a lot. So let's talk about your team a little bit, huh? You guys are probably one of the happiest teams around. Uh, you seem to meld really well, but uh, it's kind of a... I want to know about the formation. Was it mostly EE? Eternal Envy, he's not this kind of person to waste any time, really. <laughs> yeah. So, like, after TI6, when Secret lost, he was already thinking about the future mm -hmm. and uh, what he wants to do. So, like, I, I think it was even the same day he came to me. He was like, yo, you want to play? Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to play with you. Let's, let's make a team. You know, let's do something different. Let's play with like people we like and think like us and whatever mm -hmm. and I'm like all right give me a give me like a night to think about it because it was like the same day that we lost I wasn't even sure what was like happening so mm -hmm. um, but by the next day I was already like yeah let's do it and uh, it sort of just started from there. In that night what were you thinking about before you joined NP what helped you make your decision? Well at the time I was a coach right, right. and uh, as a coach you have a lot of uh, feelings and thoughts about the game Mm -hmm. um, everything is constantly developing and sometimes you just feel like when you were a player before you, like you can't be there to do those things there's right. a lot of things that you see that you just can't do mm -hmm. because uh, you're just sort of restricted in a way but obviously coaches have other uh, things that they provide for teams sure which is a necessity we talked a lot we were really close about the game and stuff and uh, I thought he would be a really good teammate. Well, what about the other guys? Why'd you guys choo why'd you choose them in particular? The other guys were are all players that I played with. SUG and MSS, uh, Envy hasn't played with them, so. But they were on Cloud Nine, right? Yeah, that was a that was a Cloud Nine with me on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> without, I did my research. Without, <laughs> yeah. So, like SUG, I recommended to Envy mm -hmm. a lot. I thought that he was a very uh, talented player, and uh, he thinks very well about the game. And after talking with him for a little while, uh, Envy was sold on it. Mm -hmm. AUI was also like uh, a coach for Secret. Yeah. We thought he was also very smart about the game. So, so let's talk about coaching. I mean, uh, some people have a huge problem transitioning from being a coach who gives commands to a player who has to work with a team. You seem to have mastered that dynamic. You're one of the better ones that have, uh, I don't ever hear any complaints about 1437. He talks too much. He does too much in games. So what's that like? How do you, how do you succeed where others kind of have problems in that? Coaching is like, it's not just about what you know about the game. It's about you understanding the people that's around you mm. and uh, how to not just behave, but like uh, how to get the right point across efficiently mm -hmm. with these people. But what about playing in the team? I mean, uh, is it easy to go from coach who can kind of have that dynamic to being able to be in the trenches with them? Uh, how you behave with your team is not that difficult, going from coach to a player. Mm. But uh, playing itself, like being in top shape and uh, coming back into that is probably much more difficult. Uh, how was that for you? What did you do? Uh, for me, Going back to playing, the first two weeks or three weeks was uh, extremely difficult. But uh, after like three weeks, I already started feeling like I was getting back into form. What did you do to do the micro? Like what's uh, the micro training if uh, I ever want to be a pro player? To be honest, it's just uh, repetition. Like, oh yeah? Uh, your knowledge about the game is what uh, makes you like a professional player. After that, it's all about practice and repetition and just getting used to everything. As the coach, ex-coach, uh, who has the worst ideas on the team? <laughs> Who's the one they have to be like, no, no, 
That's not a good idea. Is that even something you guys do? Who has the worst ideas? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Bit of a joke question. I'm sure it's me. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm just there suggesting some random stuff. Half the time I'm joking, yep. you know. But uh, surprisingly, sometimes those ideas just, uh, they just pop off, you know. Like there was a time about the support PA that I really enjoyed playing. My team didn't believe in me for like two months. <laughs> and then they, we decided to pick it. And then we're like in the finals of some tournament. The first game, it just goes crazy. And then it was just permanently bad. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, it started off as just a joke. Yeah. But it ends up being really good. I mean, I feel like that's one of the strengths of the team is that you guys are very unpredictable in how you play. Is this guy gonna feed or is he gonna kill the entire team? The other, the other team never knows. They have no idea. Is that on purpose or is that just what you guys have built your team around? I don't think that's on purpose. <laughs> it's, it's more- Come on, dude. You could have just blown everybody's minds. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's probably like more of like a stability thing, like a, a personal understanding yeah. of uh, the situation. Are you guys looking for first place? Are you looking for that drive? Do you want this at the Boston Major? As a team, our biggest goal is to just become the best team. I think uh, you can't really force like, yeah, we want to win this tournament. Yeah. We do want to win this tournament. Sure. But there's still a bigger goal at the end. People have been waiting a long time for a lot of you guys. They're calling you the new Cloud9. Not that, you know, it's going to end up like that. Um, but uh, what do you have to say to your fans out there? Um, People looking at MP. For me personally, I'm very appreciative of the fans. This team was sort of crowdfunded in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of the fans, they help us with our boot camps, our computers for the boot camps and all these things. And without them, we probably won't even be here mm -hmm. at this tournament. So I really want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. Well, that was 1437. Thank you so much. We're all rooting for NPA at this major to do well. And uh, can't wait to see not only how you do at the major, but how you do in general on your road to becoming the best team in Dota. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll see a lot from NPA coming up soon.